Kayleen and welcome back to the channel for another episode of Conversations with a King. With a King this time around. <laughs> excited because this interview has been a long time coming because yes. well I did find out earlier than everyone else but we are talking not just to Luis Portelas the pageant vlogger yes. but Luis Portelas Mr. Supernational Canada 2023. 2023 that's exactly that <laughs> how do you feel about this whole change in your life Honestly, um, it's been a surreal experience for me because this is not something that I could definitely anticipate, I would say, for a long time. Uh, I've been doing videos on YouTube about pageantry for quite some time at this point, but I never thought that I would make the, the jump, that I would take the jump and like start competing in pageant myself. The moment that I got the confirmation that, yes, I'm joining Supra, that I'm representing an entire country, I just felt like this is crazy. It's such a full circle moment. So. Here we are. <laughs> and you're here in the Philippines doing yes. your preparations, yes. doing everything, everything, right? Everything. So can you walk us through walk us through this change, this transition for you? So you got confirmation that you were joining Mr. Supranational in the, in Poland. In Poland, yes. And then and then what happened? What did you do after you got that that confirmation? Honestly, uh, for a very long time, it was just, it just seemed to be like a conversation that I was having with the organization because initially I started having these ideas probably around this time last year, right after the coronation uh, of Miss and Mr. Supernational last year. So I did contact the organization inquiring about um, who is the national director for Canada so that I can approach them and, you know, go through the process. Uh, and they got back to me and they were like, there's actually no organization in Canada. So if you wanted to compete, you would have to pitch yourself as an independent candidate. So that's what I did. I ended going against other people because of course other people also applied for it, but ultimately I did receive the confirmation that it was gonna be me. And then I just sat with it probably for like two weeks. Like as in, I knew it was me, but I still didn't announce it or anything. By that time I was already here in the Philippines. So I was, you know, literally lost. Now, where do I go with this? Like, how do I build a team? Yeah. How do I start training? You know, stuff like that. But yeah, that was the beginning of the process. <laughs> it's so exciting because I, I feel like I have watched you as an interviewer, as a pageant vlogger, and I've seen your journey as well, like yeah. starting on YouTube, yeah. later on really interviewing queens during the lockdown. Yeah. And then, and then you flew here to the Philippines. Yeah. You started attending all of these pageants in person. Mm -hmm. For the first time, right? First time, yeah. <laughs> what was your first pageant that you watched? Miss Earth was Miss definitely Earth. the very first one, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and then now, I feel like it happened so quickly mm -hmm. for you. And now you're a contestant. Yes. I think that coming here to the Philippines and getting to experience those pageants in person. So I came from Miss Earth and then I flew to Japan for Miss International. Mm -hmm. And just being close to the girls and like, especially in Japan, I was really within the bubble with the girls, so I, I get to see them in front of the screens, of course, in the cameras, but I also get to see them backstage and what it's like, you know, the sisterhood and all of that. And mm -hmm. seeing all the process really inspired me to to try it myself, it really gave me the motivation to put myself on the spot. <laughs> I love it. What part of pageantry attracted you the most to joining Mr. Supernational? Mm, to be honest, I've always seen pageantry as a way to inspire people around you but not just in the very stereotypical way you know i think that it's a great way to especially motivate the youth to get involved in their communities uh, to take care of themselves and inspire other people to take care of, the, of themselves as well you know i always try to see a reason for every single category in fashion so sometimes we have like the swimsuit competition and the evening gowns and the, you know formal wear and stuff like that for me it's all about for example, q &A. Mm -hmm. you are taking care of yourself mentally, intellectually, you know, making sure that you're prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, swimsuit, you're taking care of yourself physically. Um, formal wear, you try to portray yourself in the best way that you possibly can. And your advocacy is really nothing more than just trying to show the world that you can do something for your community. It doesn't matter how big it is, how, how small it is. It's all about just getting involved and do something for people around you. 
When you think about being Mr. Canada for this year's edition of the pageant, how do you imagine younger Louise seeing you? Like, what do you think younger Louise is saying? Yeah. Honestly, my younger self would be so proud of me, but at the same time, so in denial. Like, if you told me right now that I'm going to be Mr. Supernational Canada, if you told me this like five years ago, I would have just laughed at you. Mm -hmm. Because I always grew up being such an insecure kid. I, I always tell people I'm an introvert at my core. And as weird as that might sound, because I put myself on the internet, I really am an introvert. Uh, growing up, I had like a stutter. So I was like a very, you know, just, you know, I just kept everything for myself. Mm -hmm. So putting myself on this, you know, platform where I get to not only represent an entire country, but talk with so many incredible people from all over the world and um, touch on so many different subjects, my younger self will be over the moon, so. You'll be blown away. <laughs> You're welcome, little Louis Achar. Ah! <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's so exciting, especially with your background, because yeah. I remember we talked about this during our interview yeah. for when you interviewed me yes. two years ago. Yeah. And you told me about your background as a Cuban Canadian. Yes. And I'm sure that plays very well with how you are now. Um, you definitely are not just bringing Canada with you on the supranational stage, you're bringing your entire life, and that's including your upbringing in yes. Cuba, your heritage, your culture. Yes. So, um, can you tell us more about that? Yes. How was it like growing up as a Cuban Canadian and living in kind of both worlds? Both worlds, yes, of course. It's actually a very interesting thing that I'm doing supra uh, at this particular time in my life because I'm, I'm I'm 27 years old and I have officially lived half of my life in Cuba and half of my life in Canada. Um, and of course, many people were asking me. Louis, you always talk a lot about Cuba and your childhood, so why, why aren't you representing Cuba? And the reality of it is that, you know, I grew up in Cuba, I had all of my childhood, I moved to Canada when I was 13 and a half years old, but in reality, I became a man in Canada. I became the person that I am today. Uh, a lot of the values that I carry with me come from Canada. I went to school in Canada. So, you know, the childhood and all of those amazing memories that I that I have and I share so much in Cuba, I still felt like I wanted to represent Canada on an international stage because that's where I became the person that I am today. And it doesn't matter where I am in the world, you know, what I do, what country I'm representing, I will always carry Cuba with me as well because it's in my blood. Both of my parents are Cuban. I was born there. You can never take that away from me. Even some people, I've saw some comments like, Oh, he's not representing Cuba, or like, uh, he's not Cuban anymore. It's like, it doesn't matter what people say. It's mm -hmm. always part of my identity. Yeah. So. <laughs> you can proudly represent your heritage, your culture, your history, mm -hmm. while donning that flag. Yes. And I really love what you said on your Instagram caption about how Canada has given you so many opportunities. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting because when, when you get older, and you grow up in an environment that allows you to be who you are, allows you to pursue things that you never thought would be possible. It really makes a difference in how we live our lives. And I, I just wanted to ask you, what's your favorite experience in Canada that you feel like shaped you as an adult? Yeah. Here's the thing, Canada is really like a melting pot. If you go to Canada, it's a very diverse country. You can find people from literally all over the world. And when I moved to Canada, one thing that sometimes on the international scene you, you don't hear a lot is that Canada is officially a bilingual country. It speaks English and French mm -hmm. in the province of Quebec. And where I live is the province of Quebec. I live in Montreal. So when I moved to Canada, I had already studied English for probably two years. Mm -hmm. So I was okay in English. Like learning English. Learning English, yes. And I studied French for a few months, but by the time that I got there, I really did not understand the uh, the accent mm. the accent of, of French Canadians mm. because I started much more like a French like uh, French from France so I was having a hard time in the beginning and I literally had friends from different countries especially from Haiti that would come and walk around the school with me because I could literally not communicate with anyone this is 
prior to like cell phones and stuff, guys, to Google Translate. So I will literally walk <laughs> with my little dictionary with me. That's so cute. <laughs> and like try to translate things. But people really showed me a lot of kindness since the very beginning. And I think that's a very Canadian value and a way that people really perceive Canadians internationally. And it's mm -hmm. very true. Canadians are very, very respectful, very kind. I hope that I embody those things as well. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Honestly, like our interview was one of the, my favorite interviews when mm -hmm. I joined a fashion and you actually really inspired me to start interviewing as well because I feel like there's so much, it's so like kindness is so underrated, mm -hmm. especially in this industry. Mm -hmm. And you do exude that. And I feel like that's very Canadian of you. Thank you so much. And I must say, not to mention the interviews. You are doing such an amazing job. I'm so, so proud of you. Oh, I try. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's just so much that we can learn from all the candidates, all the people joining pageantry. And it's more than just what they look like, their body, their, their fashion, their styling. Mm -hmm. I feel like one of the most interesting things about these people are their stories. Yeah. And... That's what you've been able to pull out yeah. from the women that you've interviewed. And I hope that with this new platform of Super National, you get to share your version of that. Because I, yes. I feel like you've been telling so many stories of other people, but now you get to tell your story. Yes. I want to ask you, since you're telling your story this time around, yes. like what version of Luis Portelas are we expecting to see on the Super National stage? Oh my first? God. I know. It's just giving me chills, honestly, like thinking about how you're going to be answering questions this time. You're going to be the one strutting down the runway. Yes. So like, who is this Louise that we're, we're going to see? Honestly, you're going to see a, a mix of a lot of different versions of myself. You're going to be seeing the intellectual Louis. Ah! You're going to be seeing the fierce Louis, the model Louis, the, so many, the, the humanitarian Louis, why not as well. So many different things that... Honestly, I just want to be present in this journey in every single aspect, you know? Especially being a pageant fan myself and loving this community so much. I cannot, you know, join a pageant and not do it, you know, completely to the full extent of what it deserves. So you can expect everything and even more. And just be even ready. more. <laughs> I think that's what excites a lot of pageant fans yes. because We've seen you talking. Mm -hmm. We've seen you and how you interact with people, but we haven't seen Fierce Louise yeah. yet. <laughs> and I, I, I wanted to ask you, like, how has that been going? Because I know you've been doing your photo shoots here in the Philippines. Yes. What's your first impression of the the industry here? Because mm -hmm. we're very like bonga very yes. gina g yes. here in the country <laughs> so like how how do you feel about your your experience honestly as of right now i feel super great and i feel very very grateful to my entire team and i think that's the most important thing that sometimes if you're a passion fan but you are not seeing the behind the scenes you must have a solid team in order mm -hmm. to make everything happen like it takes a village yeah. usually so in the beginning, for example, when I had my first photo shoot, I was shaking. I was so nervous because I never actually had a photo shoot before. Never? Oh my god! It was my first one. But was um, this your headshot, the one when you yes. were? Like... So I had so on the same photo shoot, we did like five layouts. Dang, so, layout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we did like the full thing. But the moment that I walked into that room, all the nerves, all the anxiety just went away because everyone from the photographer to the creative director the stylist my coaches everyone they were just like super supportive mm -hmm. and if i didn't know exactly how to pose for one photo they would help me out and it was truly like a collaboration that's what i felt um and i feel like that's also the entire essence sometimes of the pageant community although you might not see it that way being in a pageant is a collaboration with a lot of people you collaborate with your coaches, with your trainers, you collaborate with designers, with makeup artists, and there's like so many people behind it. I think it's so surreal that you have a Filipino team with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know, it's, it really feels like a full circle moment because you did discover pageantry in a way. Yeah. Not in a way. In I discovered pageantry <laughs> through the Philippines. So it's not in a way. <laughs> How did you discover pageantry? Honestly, just people like 
harassing me like, can you react to Catriona Gray? <laughs> and I was like, you know, I didn't know anything. That was the first one, Catriona. First one. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anything at all about pageants. And you know, sometimes when I tell that story, people have a hard time believing me because pageants are so big, especially here in Asia. Yeah. But in Canada, not so much. You will rarely hear about them. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Cuba, where I was born and grew up with, you know, you just don't hear about it. It's actually not legal in Cuba. Wait, what? Yeah, you don't have... It's not that it's illegal. Right now it's fine, but it's like, it's not encouraged by the government. So you you don't have like national badges in Cuba. It's always outside of Cuba. Oh my gosh, I didn't know yeah. that. So I was never in touch with pageantry while I was in Cuba. I moved to Canada. Keep in mind, I'm this like awkward kid who doesn't speak English or French. So it's just trying to survive in Canada. I had no time to like learn about pageantry. So that was my first time that was during the lockdown, right? Yeah. Because I remember seeing your reaction to Katrina <laughs> to Katrina on YouTube and then it Gosh. snowballed from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It really it's surprising how the, the lockdown changed our lives completely. Absolutely. Yeah. And even for you, because you also boomed during that time, no? Yeah, we were just like figuring it out like during the lockdown. We were like, okay, I guess I'll join this universe. (laughs) And now you're joining Supernational. Yeah, I'm taking notes for my own guys. (laughs) I feel like we have very similar journeys in the sense that we had our first glam photo shoot for the pageant, during the pageant. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. I mean, especially, I don't know how that experience was for you, but Mm -hmm. for me, going into it, especially male pageantry, okay? Um, For those of you who follow me, like I've covered so many international beauty pageants for women, not so many about men. I think I covered Supra last year, um, and that's about it, you know? So when I would watch a male pageant, I would think, you know, there's not as much technique, there's not just much, you know, it's more about having fun on stage. But now that I'm doing the trainings, by the way, my KF Familia, I'm training with KF. Tito Rancho has just been amazing. You realize all the work that goes into it. Like my trainings are literally like three, four hours workouts. It's not just training, like it's a literal like workout. Right now, if you see me like a little crooked, my back is literally shattered in pieces <laughs> because everything hurts from the trainings. Did you do the duck walk? I do the duck walk, I do it all. Uh, we have like a male version of it. So it's not the really? same that they do. But it's still hard. Actually, right now I'm training um, at the camp, at KF, and I get to train with a lot of different girls who are competing at Miss Universe Philippines, Binibini Filipinas, Miss Philippines Earth. So I get to see their trainings, they get to see me, and we encourage one another. But I, I must admit, we work hard. I mean, like, I'm working super, super hard, but you girls mm-hmm. go above <laughs> and beyond. Like, honestly, like, respect. I feel like it's the heels. The heels make it yeah. <laughs> a little bit harder. <laughs> the heels are... But um, I wanted to touch on what you said about like the difference between pageantry for women and pageantry for men. What do you think is the main difference? Yeah. And do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing? Or is there something we need to improve in terms of like how it's perceived? What yeah. do you think about that? I think that, you know, uh, female pageantry is very competitive. So sometimes you can have, um, you can get those vibes um, depending on the pageant organizations. And as well with the candidates, like, you know, it's a competition. So I feel like the best possible environment for female pageantry is when you have like the sisterhood vibe, right? Yeah. And you are able to support one another, understanding that although this is a competition, you're still just trying to grow from it and show the best version of yourself. To the judges because ultimately yeah. they're the ones who will select you know the winner yeah. for men for male pageantry based on my impression so far it's just like brotherhood brother like literally uh of course i haven't met any of my co-candidates just yet in person but a lot of us have already been selected we have this group conversation on whatsapp and they always like every time someone is um given a title they enter the conversation everyone's like welcome to the group and i cannot wait to meet you congratulations even if you watch if you watch Supra last year, segments like the um, the swim swim competition, it just seems like they're just having fun, yeah. they're just walking on stage, uh, and, and females here, females are still held to this standard that they need to like perform, and we look at the technique and the heels and the feet, you know, there's so much that goes into it. So I feel like it's just the way that maybe social perception and the way that we pressure ourselves to perform on stage as well. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like there's something that we we can learn from how it is to compete in pageantry for men because yeah. it's like can you imagine if our pageants for women were just as fun and also not as I don't know I feel like it's so cutthroat that sometimes yeah. the expectations are just so high mm-hmm. for for women but at the same time that doesn't mean that you guys don't have expectations yeah. and don't have you don't face criticisms of you course. do of course. um how have you been handling that because you yeah. did mention like a, a while ago that yeah of course, it comes with the territory that you've gotten criticisms, like two percent, two percent of the the comments, probably. How how do you handle that now that you're a candidate? To be honest, um, in the very beginning, right after I made the announcement, I received like a tsunami of love, and that was something that I was not expecting. I I knew that you know maybe the people who follow me, who are familiar, who mm. uh, you know that they, they know my journey, will be happy for me. But I was not expecting to be like reposted on so many different pages and get literally like messages from all over the world. But on the you know that's the bright side. But then we also get a lot of criticism. There were people um, talking about perhaps my looks or my physique. You know they immediately start comparing you to other candidates. One of the things that was really shocking to me, one of the main arguments was my sexuality. So people would say you know. Oh, Louis is like openly gay. How come he's joining Supra when there are so many gay pageants out there? And I literally had like someone comment. I replied to that comment. I usually don't. Yeah. But I replied to that comment. Someone was saying, you know, I think that Canada must be out of men if they're sending you because, um, you know, there are gay pageants out there that you can join. And I replied, you know, literally like there are hundreds, thousands of men in Canada that can represent the country, and I am one of them as a gay man. Because we are part of men, we are men yeah. ourselves, you know, and it doesn't matter what you think, we still can carry um, the legacy and represent our country proudly, you know. And it's actually a very Canadian value, you know, to promote equality and inclusivity. So, if anything, I honestly feel like I'm making my country proud. So I think you are, and I, I know you are. Yes. And you're definitely breaking barriers in a way, just because these expectations are so... Number one, yeah. outdated. Yeah. What does that have anything to do with representing your country, being on stage, right? Sure. And also, it's not really their business exactly. to do. But for me, honestly, I'm really proud of myself because of the way that I'm handling it. I'm going to say, you know, my entire platform and everything for me is all about promoting exactly this type of conversations that are needed within the fashion community. This is one of the main reasons why I wanted to join. But seeing, you know, one thing is what you prepare, what you go into the pageant thinking, I'm going to talk about this and this and this. And once you make the announcement and you get the feedback from the audience, you also realize there are other things that even though you didn't think about that you need to talk about those things, people will be asking you those things and people will be questioning you. So you still need to prepare. And that's one of the things that I learned. I'm still going to have to, you know, talk a lot about my sexuality and stuff. Although I've always been super open about it. Like there's literally nothing to hide. <laughs> so I'm still adapting and learning that sometimes the hate comments will give me hints of topics that there's still so much room for conversation and growth and educating the audience. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> and the more that people push back yeah. against you being there, the more I think yeah. it shows that you need to be there. Yeah. Because if they're not used to seeing somebody like you or who you represent, the community you represent, yeah. then that just means you need to take up more space. Yes, exactly. And it's in so many different ways. You know, I just talked about my sexuality as an example, but I had people question the fact that I was not born in Canada, you know, or people question even the fact that am I Cuban because I'm representing Canada. So there's mm-hmm. still so much room for conversations and. That's why I also don't want to just limit myself to one topic and I want to have like open conversations with many different people from all over the world and just educate um, about the things that we still struggle with in the fashion community. Because I do believe that we have such a beautiful community with so much potential, but there's still so many um, toxic, you know, mentalities and things that we need to get rid of mm-hmm. in order to move on to the next phase of what this is, right? And I think it's um, it's a it's really a testament to how 
people, candidates to be specific, are so multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Like, you are both Cuban and Canadian. You are a man, but your sexuality doesn't take that away from you. Right. You can you can be any body type and walk that stage. And it's something that people tend to forget because of all these conventions that are already in place. And I'm so proud of you for being so vocal about those things because it's easy to want to hide those things and shy away because you know you just want to get through it quietly yeah. but I, I love that you're having that conversation and that you're opening up that conversation and i think it's necessary especially because uh still up until this day i feel like especially gay men feel pressure sometimes to hide parts of their lives you know whether it's their sexuality or you know just different parts that they don't feel comfortable sharing because of the backlash and mm -hmm. the the, the feedback that sometimes we receive from the audience. So as I told you before we started recording, for me it's all about shaking the system a little bit and trying to, you know, I don't know what my experience is going to be like. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely going for the win. Uh, but if I don't win, you know, if, if it ever doesn't happen, I still hope that whoever comes after me, it's a little easier for them. That's so good. You keep the door open yeah. for everyone who is following you. <laughs> Look at you just dropping the mic already. <laughs> yeah. And it's so early, you still have two months. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Okay, last question. Yes. <laughs> As somebody coming from the pageant vlogging sphere, yeah. and now you're turning the tables, now you are filling the shoes of these candidates. You're a candidate yourself. Yeah. Is there something that you learn? For the first time, as a as a beauty, you say beauty, um, king, candidate, pageant, male contestant, <laughs> candidate, pageant candidate, beauty king, whatever, whatever. I call it beauty king. Yeah, we're <laughs> kings. Why yes, not? Yes, <laughs> I like it. I like it. We'll coin that today. Is there something you learned that's new to you that blew your mind about pageantry? Hmm. In terms of what I've learned so far, first of all. My initial perception of like the preparation for men completely, you know, changed. There is so much work that goes into it. Also, I have to acknowledge I'm training in the Philippines, which is like, you know, a great place to train. Yeah, it's like next level training. So there's also that. But I realized that pageantry is all about the hard work and putting in the time, you know, especially having certain conversations with people from the organization. They constantly send us messages about, you know, keep keep in mind these things and it's all about the commitment, putting in the time and making sure that you're not just competing for these platforms because you are a vain person and you think you're like the most beautiful person on earth. But what are you going to do with this title? Like, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to promote? Mm -hmm. So that's something that I try to keep in mind because we often hear about the looks and the makeup and stuff. Mm -hmm. And But it's important to remember that advocacy and commitment is just as important. So yeah, and honestly, have fun in the process. Sometimes we forget that, and I tend to forget that as well when I'm analyzing. Mm -hmm. It's like, these people are just genuinely enjoying the process. They are friends behind the scenes, and they're just creating memories and experiences that they will remember forever. So since you mentioned that, yes. I want to bring it back to you. Uh -huh. What do you want to achieve as Mr. Supernational 2023? Wow, that's a great question. I mean, to be honest, I really want to continue doing what I'm already doing in a way, but taking it to the next level. Uh, as you know, I have this uh, talk show on my channel, Extra Extraordinary Talks, which I had the pleasure to interview you a few years ago. And honestly, the way that I see it is that I try to create a safe space for people from within this industry to express themselves, to tell their stories uh, in a way that they know that there will be no judgment and that they can speak freely. For me, initially, that just started as an opportunity to talk to people. But I quickly realized that it's a way for me to help them amplify their messages, to reach new audiences, um, and at the same time to promote through my platform stories and advocacies that sometimes I wouldn't have even thought of myself. So that's really what I'm what I'm trying to do with this uh, with this participation at Supernational is really to amplify those messages and make sure that whatever I do, as I said earlier, I want to address the things that 
are affecting this community. Because if you're able to work on ourselves first, we can be so much better later, right? <laughs> Mic drop. Wow. Q&A portion. I can't wait to watch Ooh. you. I'm, I'm going to watch you. I'm kind of nervous because everyone is telling me, you know, on YouTube, it always like analyzing Q&A and stuff. And then yeah. it's my time. What if I bug? I'm like, Ugh. The pressure is real, isn't it? Yeah. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, you just have to show up as yourself. Yeah. And that in itself is, is good enough. And we definitely cannot wait to see you on the super national stage as you represent Canada. Uh, we wish you the best as you prepare here in the Philippines. And I'm sure a lot of Filipino fans will be rooting for you as well. So thank you so much, Louise, so for you. joining us for today's video. <laughs> and is there anything that you'd like to promote? Anything we can look forward to or how we can support you for your yes. journey? thank you so much so of course supra in terms of support uh there will be a voting system so if you want to stay updated about those things please go and follow me uh on my instagram page so at luis Porteles or my facebook page as well same name um if you want to find my content i'm also on youtube under the same name at luis Porteles. and you know that's just like the social media stuff but uh in terms of the message for the viewers i just want to really 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 Thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for being so supportive of me since the beginning, not just now that I'm competing at Mr. Supernational, but ever since I started just filming reaction videos in my room like three years ago. Like three years ago, I would have never imagined that all of these things would have happened, that I would be sitting here today with you. And, you know, I'm just grateful. And I'm also, I also want to say that I'm so proud of you. I said it already, but I want to repeat it because I truly am. You. you are actually one of my biggest inspirations for this entire thing. No! Yes, yes you are. Yes you are. Because I feel like you were such a trailblazer and you were, you know, just a girl who was so full of dreams and hopes and you pushed through it no matter what people say, the adversities and everything and I can relate to a lot of those things. I'm so you. proud of you too. <laughs> I can't believe now I'm interviewing you and now you're competing. <laughs> now it's come full circle. Full circle and yes. I can't wait to, to see you on stage, to to listen to your QA, maybe yes. analyze it, I'll <laughs> react to it. Yes. <laughs> I'll react to it. And finally, um, We'll, we'll see where pageantry takes us. Yes. Thank you so much, Louise, for joining us today. Yes, and sure. thank you, everyone, for watching as well. Thank you, guys. Stay confident, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>